a modern city with traditional southern values. I underestimated how far he was going to go. What he was willing to do. Visit the historic French Ward and enjoy local cuisine at one of our five-star restaurants. Killing them wasn't enough. Lincoln Clay was using them to send a message. Or spend the afternoon in the bayou and take in its natural splendor. Sal Marcano had no idea what he was going to unleash. New Bordeaux. Safe. Family-oriented fun. Make it your next vacation destination. This city survived the War of 1812, the Civil War, and God knows how many hurricanes. But when Lincoln Clay went after the mob, he inflicted more damage than all the wars and hurricanes combined. Hey everyone, I'm Hayden Blackman, creative director and studio head at Hangar 13, and I wanted to thank you for coming out to see our Gamescom presentation of Mafia 3, an open world crime drama set in New Bordeaux, our version of New Orleans, in 1968, one of the most tumultuous years in American history. In Mafia 3, you'll play as Lincoln Clay, an orphan and Vietnam vet who falls in with New Bordeaux's black mob. When the black mob is betrayed and slaughtered by the Italian mob, led by a guy named Sal Marcano, Lincoln becomes fixated on revenge. As Lincoln, you'll wage a brutal war against the Italians, disrupting the balance of power in New Bordeaux's underworld. Today, we're going to jump straight into the middle of Lincoln's war with the mob and his attempts to build and maintain his new criminal family. We're going to start in the bayou and head for the French War. What would I give for just a few moments? What would I give just to have you near? Tell me you will try to slip away somehow. Oh! In Mafia 3, we treat New Bordeaux as a main character. We've not only worked hard to capture a unique time and place, but also to ensure that everything the player does in the open world propels Lincoln forward in the narrative. We've also given the city its own diverse criminal ecologies, which play a huge role in Lincoln's quest to tear down the mob. Let's take a look at just a few of the varied districts in New Bordeaux and what lurks beneath the surface and in the back alleys of the city. A reimagined version of New Orleans is made up of 10 districts, each with its own distinct flavor. We have the scenic and mysterious bayou, which is ripe for exploration. but is also where the Italian mob and their allies run guns and produce moonshine. To the west of the city is vibrant Delray Hollow, which is home to Lincoln and his surrogate family before they are betrayed by the Italian mob. Eventually, the hollow is taken over by the Dixie mob, who kick up to the Italians and use the neighborhood as the base of operations for heroin and sex rings. To the north of the city is majestic Frisco Fields with its manicured lawns and mansions. This is also where the Marcano family is partnered with the racist Southern Union and cooks PCP at the local university. And in the center of the city is bustling downtown, where historic buildings and plazas sit side by side with gleaming skyscrapers.
But this is also where the mob's bookkeeper, Tony DeRazio, blackmails local politicians and scams the city through sham construction sites. How did you manage to get to Tony DeRazio? I had bugs and wiretaps all over the damn place. When that weirdo left the Royal Hotel to deal with one of his men, I was listening. Tony, I didn't know you was coming. I'm just packing away your latest shipment. How long have you been running this business, Joe? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Five, six years? Five years, three months, and 18 days. Well, this is turned. Look, I, I know I've been lied, but it ain't my fault. I've always placed a premium on maintaining order. If you let the rot set in, eventually it will take hold and destroy everything you've built. The only solution is to isolate it. Eradicate it before it takes hold. You understand, Joe? Christ, Donnie, you gotta listen to me. Some nuts out there shooting the hell out of everything. You know how many of my men he killed? Yes. Dominic, is it? You will take the armored car and personally oversee the collection of all outstanding monies owed to us. Am I clear on this? Y yes, Mr. Razio. Once you have collected what is due, deliver it directly to me at the hotel. The code to the elevator is 0451. Lincoln had a couple of options. He could use the elevator code and go into the lobby, which meant shooting the hell out of the place. Or he could steal Dominic's car and go in quiet through the hotel's parking garage. Killing Tony is our focus right now, as capturing downtown will strike a major blow against the Italian mob. But before we go after Tony, we'll want to resupply, and we can do this by calling in our weapons dealer. Once the mobile store arrives, we can pick out the gear that will best suit our playstyle. As with most of the missions in Mafia 3, Tony can be taken out in many different ways. We can go in guns blazing, we can take a stealthier approach, we can even call in reinforcements. It's really all up to the player. This is like Christmas morning, because I picked up some. In this mission, we have two distinct ways to get to Tony, who is holed up in the penthouse of his hotel. We can storm the lobby or steal his bagman's car and sneak through the hotel's garage and up to the penthouse, which is the path that we'll take here. Yes, we're good. Call me if you need me. What's taking so long? I give it a month. Give it a month. That's fucked up, man. I give him six months, at least. Be some manners in all.
for a minute. Tony wouldn't mind. Mr. Thorazio. And how long have you been here? Huh? A month? Mr. Dorazio ain't the second chance type. Something's oh. And you might just live to see month two. It would be difficult not to. What? I've already taken the appropriate steps to address the situation. Believe me, things are well in hand. Well, they fucking better be. If this thing with the judge goes sideways, shit's gonna roll downhill real fucking quick. We haven't lost anything of any significance except for some men, and they can be replaced. In fact, they're the easiest thing to replace. Saul doesn't give two shits about any of those stupid fucks. All he cares about is the people that matter. Understand? I understand completely. And you have my word that all payments will continue as scheduled. None of our business associates need to concern themselves with our recent difficulties. Yeah? Okay. I'm counting on you here, Tony. Don't fuck this up. Goodbye. You should clear on out of here. Okay, here's the thing, Congressman. When Mr. Durazio made his very generous contribution. Oh, shit. Right now? Okay. Okay.
You really think you know how all this is gonna play out, don't you? <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> Go ahead. <coughs> Kill me. I'll be replaced tomorrow. <laughs> no one will even notice. You're wrong. Everyone will notice. <laughs> War on the streets of our fair city as a gunman stormed the Royal Hotel, killing an untold number of men. There was a loud crash, like a bomb going off. I looked up, and there was a man falling from the top of the building. Then all these men showed up, and every one of them had a gun. They ran into the Royal, and that's when the shooting started. <laughs> I still don't know how the hell Lincoln got out of that hotel. 